It's my pleasure to welcome uh, Tom Edwards to the episode of Innovation Insights. Tom is a senior modeler with the consulting firm Cornwall Insights, and I've been avidly following Tom's posts on Twitter for years, and so I'm really pleased to finally speak to him. Welcome, Tom. Oh, thanks for having me. I'd like to start um, by asking you about what has surprised you the most about the impact of on the electrical grid from the COVID demand suppression. I, I think it was the how quick it's felt like 20 for 25 got here because I've been talking and thinking about grid stability for a number of years now and it was always this arbitrary thing that was going to happen in the future and we had to get ready for it and then suddenly it was here and we were all talking about inertia rock off yeah. and, and all of these things and grid was spending huge sums of money and um, it, it all got very exciting very quickly. And that was the thing that surprised me is just how quick we got here. I guess it feels like we're really close to being hundred percent renewable, something like that. It's, 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 it's super exciting. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, you know, do you think um, this is, shown us that we're ready for the growing influx of renewable generation and if not what procedures or changes uh will we need uh, what additional equipment um will have to be procured and installed on the system i think it's shown us we're not ready i think that's clear grid has been doing lots of things like turning wind farms off pulling um thermal generators on trading over the interconnectors to increase uh, demand. I think that we will need to do lots of things to get ready. So for the, to hit that 2025 target of being able to balance a 100% renewable system, we're going to need things like new procedures. Um, Grid is investigating things like power available, which is a real-time uh, data feed on wind speeds from wind farms so that they can uh, work out how much reserve might be available on, on a wind turbine or uh, it's doing trials with batteries to look at how state of charge on the battery affects what kind of reserve that they can buy from that battery unit. Uh, so there's those kind of procedural, how do they change what they're already doing? But there's also things like what kind of new services can you buy? So grids creating something called dynamic containment, moderation and regulation, which are less than right. one second response services. So at the moment, uh, firm frequency response, dynamic firm frequency response, which is the kind of the racehorse Ferrari response they currently have, is about 10 seconds uh, max response. This is going to be much, much quicker than that. And do you think that it's realistic for, you know, uh, consumers and even generators to expect the same level of service or the same uninterruptible access to and from the grid, given the widening gap between the trough and the peak that you showed in your presentation? I think there's going to be much more incentives for consumers to respond to what's happening on the system. So the idea that um, supply will always follow demand might no longer be suitable. It might be that demand follows supply. And there will be some loads that are going to have to think very carefully about what the wind forecast is for tomorrow, um, because they will have to um, maybe curtail their operation if the wind isn't blowing i think people can definitely expect that they should expect that the grid will have same levels of reliability and voltage and flicker and all of that sort of stuff but it, i think that the price signal should show that perhaps you shouldn't consume here perhaps you should consume over here or you should install storage um those kind of things i think that a 100 percent renewable system is going to rely as much on demand as it does on generation do you think the operators, even the politicians, will allow the price signals to rise sufficiently to kind of drive that widespread use of, I don't know, software solutions or hardware uh, storage solutions to balance the system. I mean, you've talked about an uh, amazing increase in in um, cost of balancing, which will have to be spread. Uh, you know, is that going to continue to grow to attract that technology? Uh, I think that there has to be... Um serious consideration thought about what the market design that can bring all this together is because as i said it's an essential service yeah. it's very politically sensitive and of course the revenues here we're talking about spiky revenues and um, those might not necessarily be attractive to investors there might be a, another market design out there that helps smooth those out 
and perhaps that also helps smooth things out for investors, but it also smooths things out for consumers and gives them more confidence, say, in planning ahead for the long term. So I think that um, the current market design, in my opinion, is not suitable for a net zero world. I think it will have to change. And a serious consideration in the new market design will have to be given to revenue certainty for these new bits of kit that we need, but also revenue certainty or cost certainty for consumers as well. Hey, really thanks again, Tom, for presenting at the European Venture Fair. The energy transition is going to have a meaningful impact on the grid. And for those of us interested to see how this evolved, I really highly recommend that uh, they follow you and the work that you and your colleagues uh, are doing at uh, Cornwall Insights. Thanks again, Tom. Great. Thanks very much.